Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite stuffed headset, Gardner the Linux Gamer. Uh, this video is brought to you, as always, by my gracious Patreon contributors, including the support of Peter Wilkins. Peter, thank you for your support. It is truly humbling. Today we are talking about Google Stadia because, you know what, E3 just happened and a, a couple major, like, big AAA games have been announced as coming to Stadia. And uh, I've also had a lot of time to think and kind of reflect on, on uh, the previous video I made called Why Google Stadia Won't Help Us or something to that effect. And uh, you know what, let's talk about this. And keep in mind, Google Stadia is essentially Linux servers running headlessly that will send audio and video of the game to end users. It's essentially on live or GeForce now, but uh, it's it's running on Linux and all these games are Linux native binaries, as far as we know, and they're going to be running on Linux hardware and software being sent over the internet to end users to play the game. Now, we're not gonna talk about latency and all that stuff because honestly, I, especially at the 10 foot experience, that means in the living room for those who don't know, I don't feel like it's going to be that big of a deal with, with, especially with Google having so much network infrastructure and so much swing when it comes to actually achieving low latency with uh, content delivery. But I'm not going to talk about that too much because I want to talk about the games that are coming to Stadia. These are l native Linux games, mind you, and why... Uh, I might have changed my mind about uh, Stadia helping desktop Linux gaming. So let's get into this. Uh, a couple of the games that were announced at E3 this year as coming to Google Stadia are Baldur's Gate 3, which is uh, a big name. Um, I remember when Baldur's Gate first came out and uh, man, <laughs> my cousin and I uh, had a lot of fun with that game. <laughs> um, but also we have Doom Eternal coming out, uh, which everybody kind of knew. Uh, Doom is also going to be available, Doom 2016. Um, as well as uh, Wolfenstein Youngblood, which another id game. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, Rage 2, another id game. The Elder Scrolls Online, Borderlands 3, an unannounced Rockstar game. Um, which is crazy. We're also going to have a bunch of electronic arts games coming to Stadia. Capcom, um, Ghost Recon Breakpoint from Ubisoft, The Division 2, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, The Crew 2, Trials Rising, uh, Darksiders Genesis, a lot of the Tomb Raider games. There are tons and tons and tons of games. I'm gonna have a, the, the link to this uh, GameSpot article in the description so you can go check it out for yourself. But, why am I talking about Google Stadia? Again, these games that are coming to Stadia are going to be native Linux games. They're going to be Linux binaries. They are going to be games that are, uh, their, their graphics pipeline is going to be completely Vulkan. All right, so these games are going to be Linux games, but they're going to be released to the public as cloud software. These games are going to be delivered to end users via video streams. Uh, they're not releasing these games on Steam for Linux, as far as we know. And uh, so that's super interesting. Now, I made a video, like I said, last uh, in March when Stadia was first announced, saying that I didn't think that Stadia was going to help desktop Linux gaming. And I, I, I stand behind much of what I said in that video, but I wanted to take a moment and kind of uh, talk about the ways that I think that Stadia might indirectly help Linux gaming on the desktop, might directly help us, and some of the hurdles that it's going to pose still. So the first thing about Stadia that I think is going to indirectly help Linux gaming is that there's just going to be more Linux friendly and Linux familiar developers at game studios. That's a big deal. Um, right now, as it stands, there are tons and tons of game houses out there that don't even consider Linux as an option. So the fact that uh, you have these Windows only developers who are developing Windows only software, that's a big problem for us. That's a huge hurdle. So many games have had to go through the, the porting process of going through every single line of code and making uh, every single uh, directory call 
uh, case sensitive because Windows isn't case sensitive and Linux is. That is a major, major undertaking. So for to, to have Linux friendly developers, people who are familiar with Linux working on games for, you know, from Atom and being able to have the cross platform uh, aspect, the cross platform vision in mind when they're creating their games, that's going to be huge. The second thing that might indirectly help Linux gaming is uh, Google is developing a lot of open source projects. They're, they're contributing to it. They're developing them on their own. And these open source projects are meant to de decrease latency in the software stack. And, you know, they're meant to help with graphics debugging and all these other th things, right? So this, especially with graphics debugging, that has been a huge um, problem for Linux development. Now, granted that Kronos uh, and, and the working groups and Valve and other, other companies have, have created tools since Vulkan's first initial release that help with this, but uh, the fact that we have this huge company, Google, who are using and investing time and money into not just Linux, but also Vulkan and developing tools that help developers get their games out there, uh, that's going to help uh, us indirectly. Google is also improving Vulkan. They have been working with Kronos Group for years at this point uh, to make Vulkan a more, uh, a, a better and more stable API for graphics development. That's, that's nothing to shake a stick at. Also, Word just released that um, Google has been helping AMD develop uh, free and open source AMD drivers for our graphics cards. That's huge. That's a huge thing for us as end users uh, using Linux, using the free and open source drivers for our graphics cards. I'm an AMD user. I love AMD. Um, that's major. Now, there are some ways that I foresee uh, Stadia directly helping desktop Linux gaming. First and foremost is that uh, these companies are going to have Linux versions of their games in-house, right? So these games are going to be, I mean, all the games that I listed at the top of this video are going to have native Linux versions and that can't be understated enough. Now, whether or not they've signed deals with, with Google to say they're only gonna release these binaries on Stadia, don't know. Whether or not they're going to want to invest the time to, to take uh, the Stadia code uh, that the game depends on out and either replace it or stub it out and then release it on, uh, you know, Steam or, or GOG or wherever they want. Is that going to happen? I don't know. I'm kind of skeptical that that's going to happen, but I can't say that it's not. Uh, I think we might see a couple, like a handful of these games that are coming to Stadia being released on Steam um, with native Linux support. I mean, for God's sakes, before Google ever approached id, Doom 2016 was playable on Linux as a native binary, okay? They took the, 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 the uh, headless server code, added a head to it, and it was playable. And then when Google approached them, all they it only took them three weeks and two developers to port their game over to Stadia. It, and it just worked. Like they, they had to optimize it, obviously, and Google's Stadia stuff at that time was pretty alpha, but they were able to do it. it took them two developers, three weeks to do it. Uh, there'll be a link to the video where I got that information from uh, in the description. So check that out. It's actually a super interesting video. The other thing, the other way that d uh, Stadia might directly help us as Linux gamers is making games available that aren't otherwise on Linux. Now, personally, I will not be playing Stadia at all. Uh, I don't trust Google. I don't like what they're, uh, I don't like the business model of cloud gaming. I don't like the business model of streaming for that matter. Um, anything, Netflix, Hulu, Spotify, any of it. I don't, I don't like that. But you know, with that being said, I'm also not judging people for wanting to use something like this because it is kind of like super convenient. The idea of being able to use your uh, game wherever on your phone, on your computer, on your piece of crap, little laptop. I mean, being able to play a game anywhere, not having to worry about hardware constraints, that's a big deal. And I don't blame you if you want to do this. Personally, I'm just, I'm not a fan of Google and I don't like the idea of them watching me play games all the time. But the fact is there are going to be these uh, big AAA games that are on Stadia that aren't on Linux, but that people want to be playing anyway. And there's this whole song and dance that a lot of Windows users have about, well, I would switch to Linux, but this game and that game and that other one are not available. Okay. If you have it on Stadia and you're okay playing it on Stadia, you can switch now. 
If you're going to play it on Stadia, go for it. You can do it on Linux. We have Chrome. We have Chromium. We have, uh, I don't know if it's going to support uh, the other kind of offshoots of Chromium. Um, but, you know, that's actually a, a, a totally valid way that Stadia might help us as Linux gamers. There's also a way that we as desktop Linux gamers might help Stadia. Now, this is interesting. If a game developer publishes their game on Steam for Linux, this is a documented phenomena among <laughs> Linux gamers, being able to uh, have a problem, diagnose the problem, find the error logs and submit them to the developer for, for support. I mean, we are notorious for that. So if a game developer publishes their game on Linux and then we as gamers find problems with the game, we might be able to send that information to the developer and they might be able to fix problems that are plaguing not just our version of the game, but the Stadia version as well. There's a compelling reason right there to get the games that are published for Stadia on desktop Linux. That's a great reason. But I would be remiss to not reiterate some of the things that I think are going to be mitigating factors against um, game developers publishing their games for Linux. Not the least of which is that um, there will be proprietary code and APIs that Google has produced that the games are going to be built against. And we don't know how trivial it'll be to strip that code out of the game and publish for desktop Linux. I mean, I'm talking about things like the, the, the streaming API or being able to like integrate with uh, intera YouTube comment interaction. I'm talking about achievements or haptic feedback or any of these things that are going to be fundamentally different from running a game locally on a native binary. Um, we that's going to be an issue and we don't know how much manpower that would take we don't know what the return on investment cost would actually be for these developers we don't know so that is probably going to be a problem with releasing uh, a desktop linux version of a stadia game publishers are linux averse this is a fact this is a known fact like i said earlier doom had a playable version before google ever approached them about uh, publishing the game on stadia and you know, they did not publish it for Linux. There were mechanisms in place at the time. They didn't do it. And we don't know why exactly, but Bethesda and EA and all these companies traditionally do not support Linux. And it's really hard to convince companies to, to, to do something they don't want to do. Also keep in mind that we are still considered a niche uh, amongst the gaming market. We are a small percentage of Steam users a growing but small percentage and uh, it might not be worth it to game developers or publishers to support such a small community. Also, there might be costs of, of publishing a game on another platform and the, and the cost of supporting it. Now, I've heard arguments against this, like uh, people publish games for the uh, NVIDIA Shield and and the frickin' Razer uh, Ouya thing, whatever that was. You know, these companies are publishing on mobile all the time on these micro consoles and all this stuff. So so saying that supporting Linux is, is you know, too niche, it's kind of a, a moot point at least to me and some other developers I've talked to, but, um, but still, I mean, that's, that might be a hurdle for a lot of uh, publishers. And the biggest hurdle that I think is going to be in place, especially for companies like Ubisoft and EA, um, is that they don't have deployment mechanisms for these games. Um, Linux is not supported in Origin, in Uplay, in uh, Battle.net, in um, whatever Bethesda's launcher is called, they don't have Linux support for these uh, for these front end launchers. Um, now, Doom Eternal is going to be released on Linux, I mean on uh, Steam. So, you know, maybe they'll they these companies will kind of about face and and publish the Linux version on Steam. That'd be pretty cool. But uh, I don't know. I don't see that really happening. I stand behind very much what I said in my um, previous video where I said Stadia is not going to help us. Um, but I think I might have been a little too negative and I didn't give enough time to think about the positives. And so I'm trying to, to correct that problem. Um, I want to know what you think. Do you think Stadia is going to help us? Do you think that, um, you know, the, the fact that these games are going to have native Linux versions that are running on Stadia servers, are they going to help us? I'd like to know what you guys think. 
leave me a comment down below or hit me up on uh, Twitter at the Linux Gamer. I'm also on Mastodon at gbryant at Librem.1. If you believe in the work that I do, you can support this show with a monthly contribution over on Patreon, or you can pick up a t-shirt. There's a link down in the description. But no matter what you do, whether you hit that like button or share this video with your friends, don't forget to subscribe to see more from me, the Linux Gamer. And as always, thanks for watching.